uh, and have a great day. Have a good weekend. Uh, let's move on. One of the big stocks in focus uh, this morning is Cyan. The company has reported a very strong growth in revenues and margins. Over 8% growth is what they reported. Uh, something we haven't seen in a while. Their FY24 guidance is in line with the constant currency revenue growth seen at 15 to 20% and margins are seen rising by 100 to 200 basis points. Krishna Bodenapu, the Managing Director and CEO at Cyan, joins us now to discuss more on their Q4 performance. Mr. Bodenapu, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, you know, this is a very good set of numbers that your company has reported. So I want to, of course, get to the numbers as well. But before that, uh, there is a $1 billion revenue run rate that you had laid out for by the end of FY24. Are you on track to doing that? Or do you think that because there are some, you know, macro challenges, it would be a tall ask? So good morning and thank you for having me on the show this morning. Um, that target still is in place. Uh, we believe that we have a line of sight. Of course, uh, we've taken into account some degree of macro uncertainty, which we all can't escape. Uh, but uh, taking into, uh, into account some degree of macro uncertainty, uh, we're still quite confident that we have a run rate towards that number uh, in essentially in Q4 of uh, this uh, financial year. There is still a, a lot of work to do, but uh, we believe, you know, uh, will we be there? Yeah. Surely thereabouts, uh, but we're working hard towards getting there. So that's still a line of sight. So the reason I asked you this is because, you know, a lot of companies, your larger peers, have mentioned that there are some scale downs in terms of client spending. Some of them talk about deferrals. Some of them even talk about cancellations. Are you seeing any client cancellations from your end? And if yes, in which vertical? So I'd say uh, no more than usual, right? There's always ups and downs in any business, and our business is no different than uh, the usual ups and downs. And we continue to have those, and those are always anticipated when we do a budget or when we do uh, any outward view that we give. Um, I'd say those continue. There are some obvious risks in areas like semiconductors where uh, there is a slowdown that is uh, uh, anticipated. But I would say, I think now we have a well-diversified portfolio. If you look at the four reporting sectors that we have, which is transportation, sustainability, connectivity, and new growth areas, uh, they're all very balanced. I mean, they're all, you know, um, uh, a fourth each of the services business. Um, or if you add the manufacturing business, that's also about the same scale. So these five pillars that we have, I think are working out very well. And, and and let's face it, right, there were times when some of the sectors that we were in did not perform very well compared to the others in the market. Um, and, and I'm referring to the aerospace sector here uh, particularly. But now that sector has come back quite strongly. So I think we've positioned ourselves quite well. And what I'm exceptionally proud of is the fact that we've diversified our portfolio, especially with sustainability, uh, with the CTEC acquisition has become a big part of our business. And that's doing mm. very, very well. All right. Uh, hi, good morning, Mr. Bodhanapu. Uh, you know, since you mentioned about that acquisition, the inorganic growth has been helping the overall growth as well. So we have taken your guidance of around 15 to around 20 percent for the coming year. My question to you is how much of that will be from these acquisitions? I think last year it was, I think, in teens, uh, in double digits, I think, was the contribution. For FY24, what is the contribution that comes in from these uh, acquisitions that you've done? So uh, the way that we've done our budgeting and the way that the business is run right now, the acquisitions are very integrated into the rest of the business. So I'd not, rather not common to say that um, all cylinders are firing, essentially. Uh, it's not one or the other. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, core services business or the uh, services business that existed in Scient is doing well. Um, um, the acquisitions are doing well. So it's a well-balanced growth. It's not because of these. And also, um, if, we, if we look at a like-for-like -like number, because um, acquisitions are now also part of the base, the growth mm. is overall not one or the other. It's just I, I just want to reiterate that that four pillars of services are very, very well-balanced right now. Mm. Mr. Bodhanapu, uh, morning. Margins will be between 15 and 16 percent? Uh, yes, there's 100 to 200 bits improvement, correct. On a, on a normalized uh, level, right? Okay, uh, that's good. Right. Uh, just, just at the margin, and this is what we were discussing with our earlier guest as well, uh, who was talking about how, uh, why uh, he's, he's an investor, not very bullish on IT services, largely because of all the developments in AI. I'm not sure if, how much of that conversation you heard. Uh, are we overestimating uh, the impact here, or you think uh, it's going to take time? What's your sense? See, uh, my favorite saying is people always overestimate the short term and underestimate the long term. Yeah, in long term, there is going to be a, a fairly uh, significant change in the way we work. But in the short term, I think, you know, ultimately, um, AI is nothing but a software application at one level. And it is going to require a lot of 
people to start codifying it and testing it and you know again you can't you, you can't dip, uh, uh, rely on ai for everything right it has to be tested it has to be codified it has to be validated so at least i would say you know in the long term i'm sure you know the, many things have been disruptions and if you look at the technology and even the indian it sector space for example anytime there's a new uh, 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 disruption people write us off saying that's the end of the indian it sector but we won't <laughs> And, I'm, and and the way I look at it, AI is also the same way, right? A lot of us are using AI very effectively. I think your guest also mentioned that on the lower end, there is going to be disruption, but on the mid and higher end, it's actually a huge benefit because that's where the domain expertise and the knowledge that has to be codified into AI really comes in. So it's sure. it's really an opportunity, and I'd say we are one of the most resilient mm -hmm. sectors. We'll be fine. Oh, ab absolutely. Kudos to all of you for staying relevant in, in a market that is uh, disrupting by the hour, right? Forget about by the year so it's not an enviable job at all but just one final question you have new growth areas that you've gotten into and I understand 20% of your business now comes from these new growth areas whether it's semiconductors high-tech automotive there's been a bit of a degrowth over there this quarter uh, can you help us with some trends that you're seeing in these new verticals yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there is a lot of disruption in these areas, and that's why, you know, a couple of years ago, we we made the choice to focus on uh, some of these areas, including semiconductor. Just the usage of semiconductor in various industries is growing up, growing exponentially. Or you look at automotive, where the disruption in technology is is really, you know, it's 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 really once in a lifetime from the shift from sort of mechanical cars to electronics yeah. to now electric. So I think there's just a lot that's going on in these areas, and the opportunity that we see is to bring our knowledge and domain expertise and that's why we've invested uh, quite aggressively into these areas and will continue to do so and that will be one of the key growth drivers for us very quickly what about the dlm uh, ipo i think uh, you know that that's that's uh, seen some headway when do we see that um uh, i believe it will be by the end of march that's all i can say unfortunately i've been uh, asked not to talk about it because that's A end of this fiscal no, end of May, sorry. End of May. May. End of May. All right. Got that. Thanks so much. Uh, congratulations on a good showing. You're sounding rather confident as well on the way ahead. So wish you well, and we look forward to chatting up with you sometime during this quarter.